Welcome back, guys, to Kerbal Space Explosion. We are almost there. We're almost done designing this super ship that I may just break the game with. I think maybe we already did break the game. Maybe that's the cause of all of the polygons flickering in and out. So we've got Scattershot, uh, Afterburner over here, Nose Cone, and Strafe. We have one more to do, Lightspeed, the race car. He's going to go up on top, and I may rotate him around to help balance the thing. I did a little test off camera, and it flies kind of straight. I have to wrestle with it a bit, but it kind of works. <laughs> I don't know if we're actually going to have enough fuel to get to Jewel with how heavy this thing is. Uh, so I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see, but anyway, we have one more ship to design before we can even find that out. So, let's work on a race car. Oh, one other thing, real quick, before we get into designing the race car, let's take a look at where the race car is going. Here's Jewel and its five moons. And Lightspeed, the race car, is going to Bop here. Bop is the one with the weird, really weird orbit. It's very far off the plane. Let's take a look at it. Zoom in nice and close. It is extremely irregular. It is quite lumpy. Let's take a look at the parameters. The radius is a mere 65 kilometers. And it has a gravity of 0 0.06. That means that's a little bit more than Minmus, I think. I think Minmus is 0.05. And the other small moon of the system has a slightly lower gravity. This one over here, Paul. Slightly lower gravity, easier orbit to get into. Bop here, very irregular, very low gravity. And because it's such a bumpy surface, I think that rover would be fun to jump, do some sick jumps, you know? You know? Uh, so this is where we're going. Let's, let's make a race car. All right, so first thing to do is to pick a command pod. I'm, I've been trying to use a different one for each ship. I think I've done that so far. We've got this one, which I used for nose cone, I think. And this one I used for strafe. This one I used for scatter shots. I don't remember which one I used for, let's see, who's left? Afterburner, the, uh, the motorcycle. Or did I use him for Afterburner? I don't know, but I want to use a different one that we haven't used yet. I can't grab that until I put another part on. Okay, so I was thinking of using this thing. And so it's going to be like, kind of like this. Uh, we need some wheels. We also need to keep in mind... Now, while it's going to go on the top, I, I think I also want to work in these modular clamp systems in case I need to offset the weight of uh, Scattershot, who's way off center, if I need to offset his weight um, with by putting something on the other side of, I'm getting the, the names are hard hard to keep up with. Uh, uh, Afterburner, the the motorcycle. If I uh, we've got some clamps on the other side of him, so we can put some extra weight on there. Now, we might just use the race car as the extra weight. So we have to keep in mind... Okay, this might not work, because this is a little awkward. And that is not straight. Um, but you can see from the picture, you've got this kind of... Maybe if we did this. That might work. And uh, we'll do this. Uh, we've got this cockpit, which has this sort of rounded shape. And I was thinking, that sort of fits the bill. The unfortunate thing, look how far down it sticks. So I don't, actually, I don't think that's going to work. This cockpit not going to work. What else can we use? I haven't used this one. We could kind maybe. I mean, it doesn't really... It doesn't really look the same, but none of these cockpits kind of look like this. Maybe this one is kind of round, and it's got that white surface like the cockpit of the race car. Oh, whatever. Let's just go with it. Let's get a move on, little doggy. Okay, so I do want to put the, the modular clamps on here. I'm going to put those kind of in the bottom in the center. 
like so. Is that? No, it's not. I was going to say, is that centered? Nope, it's not. Something like that. There we go. Okay, so cockpit has been decided. Next thing we need to do, we need to pick the wheel. That's the, the next most important decision. Let's just do something like this so we can... I, I'll probably end up changing this so that the uh, the proportions look a little nicer. Now, why does this happen? I just want... I want that on... There There we go. That was easy. Uh, I want wheels that look right. Uh, but I may change the actual, you know, which parts I'm using here. Stretch things out, shrink things down. So we could use these. Let's get some symmetry going. There we go. We, we may have to extend them downward so that they... They reach below these docking clamps. So we can use those. These are too big, obviously. Uh, these are ladders. This thing is tiny. Obviously not using that. That's for planes, not using that. Only other option is this. And looking at the toy, I think, uh, I think this is the way to go. I think that'll do. Yeah. I think that'll do. And we can have some like fins on the back. Like this kind of thing. Kind of match that a little bit. And then we'll, we'll put some fuel tanks on it and some engines. I guess I'll probably use nuclear engines on this guy. They're just so versatile in outer space, especially with a, a lightweight fella like this. There we go, something like that. All right, here we go. This is the, more or less, I think, the finished product. Let me turn on the brakes for a second so it stops rolling. We got a lot of these, I actually forget what they're called, but we have a lot of these forming the body of the thing. The only thing I'm a little disappointed in is there isn't the little cutout here like there is on the race car. Uh, this goes straight down the body, but that was sort of necessary because there are fuel tanks under there. We've got some nuclear engines on the back. We've got the fins, we've got the spoiler. Uh, we've got some headlight, headlights in the front and uh, some red colored lights to make the, the whole thing look kind of red. Uh, it looks all right and it drives okay. Let's give it a little test drive. Let's turn off the brakes. Oh, look at that. The spoiler gets a, a little downforce going. Actually, that's, uh, that's giving us upforce. That's going to make us less stable. I wonder, can I... Let's... um. There we go. Okay, that's better. That'll keep it steady. So there's no atmosphere. There's not going to be any atmosphere on Bop. So obviously that will not make any difference whatsoever. Now, if you look at, look how wobbly this thing is getting. Just for moving back and forth like this, that's a little worrying. I'm wondering why it's doing that. It does seem fairly fragile. Maybe we just need some some struts or something there to help reinforce that. And then we've got some engines on the back, but we won't be able to take off, obviously. But we could get going a little faster. I think this is a pretty good success. It's got a decent amount of fuel. It's going to such a lightweight planet with nuclear engines and the amount of fuel. It sh shouldn't have any problem. Uh, the only other thing to show is the landing gear, which is a little off center. Oh, okay, the bottom one blew off. Let's slow down, actually. Oh, boy. Why am I going backwards? I have the I have the brakes on. All right, well, we stopped. That's a success. Wow, what a brilliant race car. But we have some asymmetrical landing gear here so that when it lands on its tail, it should tip over onto the wheels. At least that's the plan. The whole thing does seem kind of flimsy, but hopefully that shouldn't matter in a gravity of 0.06 on BOP. All right, so here we go. Simple enough launch. Had to make it a little different from the previous ones based on the nuclear engines being close together. Anytime I tried to build it off of this guy, the whole thing would just break because this thing was very flimsy. But if we just don't uh, put anything on that, it should be fine, I think. Okay, here we go. We're taking Merlong on his maiden voyage. He's the, the new guy among our, our crew of... Old familiars, five, four, three, two, one, go. Our veterans. Oh, oh, another thing I need to do. I need to, I put a little, uh, 
probe core right here on the nose. You notice my little nav ball was off center. That's because of the orientation of this command pod is at 90 degrees. So I put a little, a little probe right there so that we could have a proper nav ball. Of course, Merlong still thinks he's actually piloting the ship. Let's not ruin his maiden voyage. Let's not give him some sad feelings. Look at that. Yeah, that looks like a race car, all right. And hopefully it won't just explode right off the bat as soon as we get... Let me slow down a little more. As soon as we get onto Bop, I'm hoping it performs a little bit better in the lessened gravity. But we won't really know till we get there, if we get there. I, I have to admit, I'm starting to doubt that we are ever going to get to Jewel. <laughs> I think I may have made this thing so heavy. I'm talking about Computron, not this race car. Uh, the total ship may be so heavy we never get there. If we get there, we may never get back. And I didn't put, uh, I did not put antenna on any of these things, so it's not like we can send uh, power back, or not power, but uh, science. Not that I need to, because we finished off the tech tree. But if I wanted to do that, I couldn't. Okay, let's get rid of them. We Separatrons! Yay! Okay, let's throttle up. And tip over. Just I want to be just past 45 degrees. Let's throttle down a little bit so we don't overheat. And this thing is a little bit awkward. I'm having a fight with it a little bit. It should be fine once we get rid of these big orange tanks. Maybe because I don't have enough... Reaction wheels? I'm not sure exactly why. Oh, careful. Look at that. I wasn't paying attention. We shot right up there. And that is still falling. Uh, that's not how I normally like to do gravity turns. I normally like to have... I normally like to have a bit more orbital momentum going into my orbital burn maneuver so that this burn is quicker. Okay, what does this say? 75. And we're at like 72 there. Okay, that'll be fine. And that's a burn of 44 seconds. I think we have enough to do that. It should be fine. I hope. If not, we'll uh, we'll do a relaunch and try to get it right. Uh, Merlong may crash into the sea and die, and we'll take someone else. <laughs> right? I'm sure he wouldn't mind. He's behind the wheel of a of a futuristic race car. This is the kind of thing he signed on for. Okay, T minus 44 seconds to our estimated burn of 44 seconds. Let's do, I guess we're only in times two acceleration. Let's go back to one times. Here we go. Let's see if we got enough juice to do this. Whoa. No, no, tip down. Tip down. Stay on that target. And let's watch the fuel dissipate. Get burned out the butt of our rocket. Uh, I think we will be able to do it. I think so. And then we should have a little bit left to get close to our... Oh, gosh! What's going on? No! Go down. Oh, gosh. This is not going as planned. Not going as planned. I have to wrestle with this thing a lot. We're running out of fuel. Okay, let's see what we did. We only have a little bit left. Okay, Apoaps is 79. Not good. <laughs> Periaps is... 49. Crap. Ah, uh, let's see. What to do now? I kind of screwed that up a little bit. Computron is ahead of us. Let's tip down. Let's tip down. This is what we do. We tip down and fire. This will bring down our apoapsis and should bring up the apoapsis. Uh, kind of. A little bit. As long as that gets over 71, 71, and 84, how much do we have left? Whoa. Uh, 286, okay. So let's go all the way around. A little bit of a burn retrograde. I did kind of screw this up, but oh, oh well. Who cares? I can fix it. We can fix it. Don't worry, guys. We can do it. We're going to get into a very, uh, as similar an orbit as I can to this and just go around until we get close and then start using RCS. Should be fine. 
Get all the way to the periapsis and then bring our apoapsis down. Okay, let's rotate around to that retrograde. Yeah, I did a test burn before launching this guy. I did a Computron test burn to see if he flew straight, and he kind of does. He f I have to wrestle with him a bit, and he wobbles back and forth a little bit. But more or less, he goes the direction I want him to go in, which is the important thing. And the verdict is that I'm not sure if we'll have enough fuel to actually get there. <laughs> because the ships are so heavy, there's so much mass that our thrust to mass ratio isn't very high. And I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure what's gonna happen. <laughs> that would be hugely anticlimactic if we didn't have enough fuel to get there. Okay, let's go ahead and just, just do this. 76, 71. Uh, okay, that's, let's save our fuel. Let's say that's good enough. Whoa, a little bit of lag. And we have 280 liquid fuel times two, 560. Okay, that's good. Let's make Computron our target. There we go. Nearest intersect here is 360 or 356 kilometers. On this side, it will be 342. So I'm just gonna whip around the, the planet enough times for that to come down. And we'll continue recording the episode when we get close to docking. All right, here we go, the moment of truth. I don't know if this is the most stable docking clamp or docking port, whatever we could have had. It's a little bit off-center. But hey, this mission was going to be too easy. So let's add a little bit more challenge. Oh, crap. Go this way. We overshot. We overshot. It should, uh, the automatic docking procedure should start any second now. Even though I kind of overshot. Okay, slow down. I think it has started. Did it do it? Are we going to do it to it? What's it doing? Oh, what's it doing? Uh, I'm not sure if it is or not. We are lined up pretty darn close. There we go. There it go. There, there it goes. Okay, do it. Become one. Merge. <laughs> Technobots, merge for the science. Come on. You know you want to. Oh, did I screw it up? Is it not doing it? They're like, they're sort of flirting with each other. They're not quite kissing yet. Oh, it's moving around. They're trying. I'm trying not to get in the way. So I turned off RCS and SAS. Look at that Autobot symbol right there. It's awesome. Come on, guys. What are you waiting on? <laughs> Merge, I said. Merge to form Computron. Okay, maybe, um, okay, let's turn this back on. Maybe I screwed this up. Let's rotate a bit. Who did that do, just do the trick? And back, and back. Come on. Rotate. Rotate. Center. There, it's trying. It's trying to do it. Look how close I am to this. We don't want to break the ship. Oh, now we've... Wait a second. No. Turn this way. Oh, crap. Dang it. Oh, no. That's not what I want to do. Not what I wanted to do. We want to turn this way. Yes. I was definitely off center there and go this way. Crap. Definitely screwed that up. I wonder if it's even going to auto-dock now. Uh, go this way. Turn, turn. I want it to be basically at 90 degrees with everything else. I don't want it to be on some wonky angle. I want it to, uh, well, I'll, I'll show you why I'm docking it like this in a second. If I can actually get it to dock. Oh, I think we did it. I think we did it. Right there. Kurpowski! <laughs> yeah! Sorry for shouting into my microphone. There we have it. So I docked the car like that to try to account for the off-balance nature of scattershot hanging off the side like that. Originally, the original plan was for light speed here to be on the side to counterbalance 
afterburner, the motorcycle, but the motorcycle ended up being freaking huge. So I needed something of a similar size to, uh, to counterbalance it. But then he was sort of too big and stuck out the side. So we've got this little weight on this side. That is a crazy looking ship. Oh, it's not... Oh, you know what? I think that's okay. It's not quite 90 degrees. I wanted it to be like this. Nose cone here is heavier than Strafe. Just a little bit. And he's also a little bigger. So the ship is a little bit off center to this to this side, only slightly. So I think I'll, I think this will be okay. I will do tests before we leave for Jewel, just to make sure. Let's turn the lights on. That's a lot of lights. Okay, uh, in the future, I'm mostly only going to turn lights on when we have the ships separated, I think. I don't know. I may not stick to that. Never mind. Forget I said that. Let's look at the combined stats. We've got almost 20,000 electrical charge, 47,000 liquid fuel, 57,000 oxidizer, 320 solid fuel. What is that? Oh, I know what that is. Um... No, I'm not sure what that is. Is that, uh... Is that this? No, that's liquid fuel. I'm not sure what that is. Oh, Separatrons! Right! We still have Separatrons. That's what that is. Okay, that makes sense. And then 4,100 monopropellant. Zero intake air. Okay, because we, we're not in an atmosphere right now. So, wow. Wow! That has been a massive project to design all of those things. Will we actually have enough fuel to get to Jewel? That is the subject for next time. Hope you guys enjoyed it. See you later. Take it easy. Have a good day, guys. Bye-bye.